Okay, let's talk about programming loops, for loops in particular. A lot of people have problems with them, especially beginners. They can be tricky to get grips with, but we're going to look at loops in four different languages. Not because I want to show off, but simply because once you get the hang of the idea of loops, you'll be able to transfer your skills to other programming languages more easily. We'll look at loops in Visual Basic.net, C Sharp.net, Java, and JavaScript. Loops are easier to understand in Visual Basic as you don't have any curly brackets and semicolons to trip you up. And for the other three language, languages, you'll see that the syntax is almost identical. Now here's some code in Visual Basic.net. I've got two variables set up. I've got a start loop variable and I've got an end loop variable. And they're both integers. And I've set the end loop to a value of 10. This type of programming is known as sequential programming. In sequential programming, the flow is from top to bottom, with each line of code being executed. The programming flow doesn't want to go back up again, so it doesn't want to do this. It just wants to do this. If you want upwards movement, you have to force it to happen. And the loop is a way to do that, force the program to go back up again. So we want to force it that way. Then after it's gone back up with the top, it'll go back down. And because it's in a loop, it'll go back up and back down, up and down. And the reason why you'd want to do that is simply to execute the line of code here. We're just ex executing this line of code. But you might want to read a text file line by line. You might want to access an array, manipulate strings of text. But loops just make your programming life a lot e easier. Let's have a look at the component parts of a loop. You start with the word for, then you need a starting number for your loop and an end number. Here I've set the starting number to 1. The start and end numbers tell the program how many times you want to go up and down, rather down and up. Then we're going down and up 10 times, so from 1 to 10. Another important aspect of a loop is something called the increment value. The increment value is how to get from your start number to your end number. In Visual Basic.net, the default is to add 1 to your starting variable. This was our starting variable. That next start loop means add 1 to the start loop variable each time around. Let's see the effect of the loop and this line of code. And I've got a form already prepared here. Oh, let's copy F5. Let me drag this one in. And if I click Go, you'll see that the numbers 1 to 10 are printed out. And that's all the loop does. Just prints out whatever was in start loop. And start loop is changing each time around. It's getting one added to it for every complete loop. So that's getting one added to it. Let me do something a little bit more useful here. Suppose I wanted to print out the 7 times table. I have some code already prepared for this, so let me just copy and paste it. I want to copy and paste over this. It's a little bit longer, but it's just the start loop again there. Then there's some text, and then it's start loop multiplied by 7, and then a new line. And let me run this program. Drag it in. I've also increased the size of the font behind the scenes, and if I click, click Go, so there we go, the 7 times table. This is the start loop, so it's changing each time around, 1, 2, 3, 4, and then we're multiplying the start loop by 7 each time around, it's 7, 14, 21, 28, etc. So that's loops in Visual Basic.net. Now I want to switch to C sharp.net. So here's C sharp. And if you're coming from Visual Basic.net, it does look, uh, look a little bit more complex. But here's the loop here. And it's the same thing. It just keeps going round and round for a total of 10 times. Now we've got two integer variables set up. There's start loop and there's end loop. And again for the loop it starts with the word for. And all three conditions are there. So there's the starting condition. There is the end condition. And there's the increment value. So 
put it all for a start loop it's uh, set to a value of one again the end condition it's a little bit different here but what you're saying is keep going around the loop while start loop variable is less than or equal to the end loop variable and for the end condition again we want to add one to what's already in start loop that's all that means start loop plus plus is to increment the start loop variable so C sharp the syntax is a little bit more different as well I've got two curly brackets round brackets rather <laughs> there and start condition the end condition and the increment have to go in between them and you separate each part with a semicolon so we've got two there so the code between curly brackets there's the curly brackets so you could need to go between two curly brackets for for loops in C sharp and that's the line of code we want to execute over and over again so let me run that code drag the form in and I click go and there we go there's the same numbers printed out one two three four five six seven eight nine ten so that's the loops in C sharp and if I show you loops in Java and JavaScript let me extend that you'll see that they're exactly the same so there's Java so you got four which is the same as that one there. then you got start value end value increment number and again you see the round brackets and you see the curly brackets and you see the semicolons if you compare the Java for loop to the JavaScript for loop you'll see they're exactly the same so if you use a programmer what this means once you get the hang of loops in one language especially if it's C sharp then you automatically know how to code in Java and JavaScript so there we go that's for loops they can be quite tricky to get the hang of but stick with it and you'll get there